Welcome to the Film Florida podcast. I'm John Lux, and I'm the executive director of Film Florida. Thanks for downloading this episode of the podcast. Today, we talk to another state legislator, Republican State Representative Mike Caruso from Palm Beach County. Representative Caruso was born in Washington, D.C., but has lived in Florida for more than 30 years. In addition to being a legislator, Representative Caruso is a certified public accountant, and he's also a strong supporter of the film, television, and digital media industry. We talked to him about his legislative initiatives, his support for the industry, his advice to members of our industry to effectively engage in the legislative process, and more. Before we visit with Representative Caruso, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review the Film Florida podcast. If you're not already a member of Film Florida, please consider joining at filmflorida.org. And don't forget, we have a Film Florida merchandise page. Check it out at teespring.com slash stores slash Film Florida to purchase Film Florida t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee mugs, and now protective masks as well. Now here's my conversation with Florida State Representative Mike Caruso. Thanks for joining us on the Film Florida Podcast, Representative. Good afternoon, John. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for being here. So I usually start our interviews with the guest's backstory. So take a little bit of time and help our audience get to know who you are a little. Wow, backstory. Okay. Um, Born in Washington, D.C., in Georgetown, actually and raised in uh, Southeast Washington for a little bit until the Martin Luther King riots, and then family moved out to uh, suburbs of DC into Maryland. Uh, grew up with two brothers, um, I, you know, normal kid, you know, mom told us to come back when the lights came on on the streets. And, uh, and that's what we did. Otherwise we're out there causing as much trouble as we possibly could. And um, I ended up uh, going to George Washington University graduating there, working downtown DC as a CPA for a company called, back then it was called Pete Marwick. Now it's called KPMG and another firm called Grant Thornton. And that's still called Grant Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did that. And, you know, I, as a kid, I, um, I grew up selling flowers on the streets with my mom and dad. Um, they dropped me off in downtown DC in front of a, actually in front of a cemetery, John, if you can believe it. Wow. Um, I'm five years old. I'm standing on the side of the street with buckets of flowers. And, and uh, my dad says, I'll pick you up when it's dark. Sometimes that was six o'clock. Sometimes it was car trouble or whatever. And he picked me up at 11 o'clock, you know, but there I am in Southeast Washington, DC. And if you can remember the early sixties in DC, um, not a very nice place to, can you imagine dropping your five-year-old off there? Uh. <laughs> but that's what we did. Um, and I sold flowers. I cut lawns. I, I, I painted houses. I worked my way through college. And um, in 1986, I came down to Florida and never went back. Absolutely here. love it down here. Absolutely love it down here. Um, you know, I, I had my own CPA practice in Washington, D.C. at the time. And uh, one of my clients moved to Florida. And a year later, he calls me up and he says, help. And he's a, he was a rather large client and a mentor of mine, actually. And uh, he moved to Boca Raton and, and set up shop down here. He's a developer. And so I, I came down to do what turned, looked like about a week's worth of work um, over the phone. And it, I came down November 7th, 1986, and never went back. I wow. finished that job sometime in March of the 87. So it turned out to be a six month project or five month project. And um, I was hooked on Florida. I told, I told my, my wife, I said, honey, pack the bags. We're moving to Florida. And so, you know, we packed up the kids and, and uh, ended up, I, I, right now I've got seven children. The youngest is 21. The oldest is uh, 36. And don't ask me their birth dates <laughs> uh, and three grandchildren. So and, and I would imagine some more on the way. I hear a rumor. Uh, here well, and, there. It, and for those that, that don't know that are listening, being a state legislator in Florida is technically a part time job, although, you know, we know that that isn't necessarily the case. But you mentioned that you're you're a CPA. Connect the dots. Why does a CPA run for the Florida legislature? Well, let's start out with your first premise <laughs> about being a part time job. Um, yeah, it's, it's a part-time job. It's only uh, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. 
And, um, and then that leaves the rest of the week to do whatever you want to do in life. You know, right. so it is a part-time job. And I try to, in that extra time, I try to run a CPA practice here in Delray Beach. Okay. I'm a, a forensic CPA. You know, I've always, I got involved in politics um, without even thinking about it. You know, one step at a time, uh, whether, you know, I've always been involved in the community. Uh, I was a little league baseball coach for 30 years. I, um, I, I did that for 30 years. I, I was involved in the water skiing uh, industry uh, in terms of uh, helping the sport come along for many years. And, and then I got involved on boards in the city. I was a parking advisory board, a police, police advisory board, parking management board, uh, redevelopment coalition board, economic committees. And all of a sudden, uh, one day somebody called me up and asked me to run for commissioner of the city. So I said, uh, wow, you turned it into a full-time job that pays $9,000 a year. I don't think I can do it. Eventually he said, uh, no, I, we need you. So I, I, I ran for commission for a day. And after a day, somebody else called me and said, no, we don't want you to run for the city commission. We want you to run for state representative of the, in the Florida house. So I climbed on board and that's what I did. And, and I, I actually, I enjoy it. I totally love it. Um, you know, you get up in the morning before being a state rep, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd say, wow, somebody needs to fix this. Okay. Whatever the issue was. Now I wake up in the morning and uh, I go, wow, we need to go fix this next session. Mm -hmm. And I start working on legislation and, you know, getting it drafted and then and eventually we get bills. So um, I passed seven bills over the last two years and brought back $72 million in appropriations to my district. So I love what I do up there. Excellent. And now you were first elected to the Florida House in 2018, and you won by a very, very close margin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, close is, is not really a good descriptor. Uh, and then you were reelected in 2020. And again, it was a close race, not as close as 2018, but still pretty close. Talk about the makeup of your district uh, and why your elections were so close and, and how does that influence the way you govern in Tallahassee? Well, that's a great question. Um, we'll go back to the original. Yeah, I won um, my first election by 32 votes. Wow. And that's after many recounts, uh, electronic recount and then a hand recount. And uh, my, my total went from, I think, 287 down to 32. And uh, it involved two weeks and lots of lawsuits and even the Supreme Court of the state of Florida. And then they wanted to move it on to the U.S. Supreme Court. I said, no, we're done. Mm -hmm. And let's just let the chips fall where they may. And uh, 32 votes. So then um, this election, I, I actually won John by 11 and a half points. Yeah. Um, which was a, a big win. That's a huge win down here. My, my constituency down here is, you know, it's a third a Republican, a third Democrat, and a third NPA. Okay. So um, non-party affiliates. Right. And so you got, you know, a third each. I would say that the Democrats are probably a plus two over the Republicans. The makeup of my district doesn't change the way I run, work in Tallahassee. I think I'm perfect for, for my district because I'm a moderate Republican you know, my, my values, my principles are all, are all pretty much represented here in this district 89 and, and uh, Delray Beach or uh, Boca Raton and, and throughout the Palm Beaches along the coastline. So, you know, when I get up there, I'm a little bit of the oddball because I'm, I'm more, I'm more center than most of my colleagues and members up there. So, you know, sometimes like right now I'm calling for a mask mandate um, I think I'm the, I'm, well, the papers are all telling me I'm the only one that's calling for, or only Republican calling for a mask mandate. So, you know, I am who I am and, uh, and that's what I go up there and, and uh, do. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting when I get up there. I, uh -huh. I get yelled at a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're probably doing something right, I suppose. That's what they say, right? I, I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. And now you've supported our industry since you were first elected. And actually, prior to your election, you know, you made your, your support known. In your words, why do you support uh, the film and television industry here in Florida? You know, I think the, the film industry is just a, such an easy thing to bring to Florida. We, you know, we are the, 
the tourism capital of the world with um, Mickey Mouse in Orlando. And I think it only goes, it's only natural that we be the, the center of um, the film industry also. You know, there was a time in the past that uh, we, were, we were almost there. Right. You know, I can remember, let me go back, eight, seven, five. That's about 15, 16 years ago. Um, the film industry was really coming along. I know that, um, you know, Universal, Disney, were starting to have film studios in Orlando and, and we were starting to do um, filming there. And, and a lot of movies were being produced out of here. And then but you go back even further, we had what Miami Vice. Right. And, you know, shows like that, which, uh, you know, it, I just think Florida is a natural, uh, should have a natural bond for the film industry with the weather we have down here and the, the landscape, the architecture. It, it's just a perfect place for the film industry. And, and you know, sadly, um, the industry has been disregarded compared to the, the STEM industry, you know. You know, we've got the Cape and all that stuff and and it's been ignored. And, and frankly, I'm I'm kind of tired of seeing the peach after the movie credits roll. And you, uh, you and you know, me it's, both. It, it's time to see. Uh, I don't know what our symbol would be, but it'd be, you know, the palm tree you yeah. know, or something. I mean, yeah. you know, um, some, some palm trees and some oranges, some oranges. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Besides all of those reasons that you've mentioned, you have a personal vested interest in the growth of the instability of our industry in Florida. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Um, in fact, that's why I was kind of dating myself back 15 years ago. I remember uh, taking my daughter. Um, I've got a daughter, Kimberly and um, Kimmy, we, nickname, but uh, we were taking her up to Orlando to, to do shoots for Disney and, and, uh, at, and Universal and Nickelodeon was big back then. I, it still may be, but I don't have little kids anymore. Um, no, it's, and, it's uh, not in, not in, it's not big in Central Florida anymore, but it is okay. on still on TV. Yep. And so you know that was the kind of thing, and and she wanted you know she wanted to be a an actress, and and all of a sudden um, the industry kind of shut down, and she she had to literally to keep working in the industry, she had to go to California. So I had to send my eleven year old daughter to California you know, to, to maintain her dream of being in the, in, you know, the film industry. And uh, she's been very successful out there and, and, uh, but I miss her, you know, and I don't, I don't get to go see her like I would like to, you know, and then so um, I, I think we need to, we need to work hard at bringing this back to Florida. By films being shot in Florida, we're advertising our states, free advertising, and it helps our economy. It's a clean industry. And, you know, unlike any manufacturing and things like that, film industry is a clean industry. It doesn't impact our environment and it brings can bring huge dollars to our economy and jobs. So um, and technical jobs, high paying technical jobs, in addition to the, the actors and actresses that every, everybody thinks of. There's so much for every actress that gets on stage um, or gets in front of a, a camera. There's probably 25 people supporting that. I mean, I know when I do my little commercials for uh, my campaign, um, you know, the production crew that shows up, it's, wow, okay, there's 20 of you. What are we doing today? <laughs> it's just, well, I thought we were going to take a, a cell phone and film the thing, you know, but um, it ends up being a, a big production. And, and people don't realize that film is money and money is jobs. And uh, jobs is a lifestyle down here that we need to support. So I, I hope we can do that. Absolutely. It's, it's really well said. Uh, and besides, you know, our industry, what are another, what are some of your other top priorities as a member of the Florida House of Representatives? Well, um, well, as a CPA, I'm running a bill for the FICPA um, that's going to, it has to do with retired accountants. And that, that's kind of a, I, I talk, if I talk accounting, I'll put everybody to sleep, John. So <laughs> I, I won't do that. But I, I do have um, bills for, I, I passed two bills in the, over the last two years dealing with the opioid crisis that we're having, okay. and I will continue to spearhead that that issue. And so I've got a, a bill that I'm filing uh, that deals with the opioid crisis again, and with dispensing of opioids and uh, and peer um, peer specialists that are people that treat the uh, those fighting addiction. Um, I've got um, a justice reform bill. I've got a, hurricane, a bill related to hurricane preparation. 
you know, of course, when we get there, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to work on rebuilding the economy. We're going to have to work on our $10 billion shortfall in our budget. Um, we want to work on, um, well, obviously, we're going to have to deal with COVID and, and getting the vaccines out to everybody and that the logistics of that. Let's see. And, and we want to work on protecting public education. Uh, you know, we've, we've come a long way in the last two years. Last year, we increased teacher pay by half a billion dollars. And by doing so, we raised uh, ourselves in terms of the, the national status. We went from number 28 down to uh, number five in terms of ranking, in terms of pay, which makes it more competitive um, for attracting teachers, the best teachers to the state of Florida, or keeping the best teachers in the state of Florida. And then in terms of per capita spending, we moved from number 48 in the country down to uh, number 27. So, uh, and we, we increased uh, per capita spending over the last two years by $438, something like that. So um, it's important we continue, continue to work on educating our children and, and making sure that they have the best available education that can be, uh, you know, produced. And now outside of being a legislator and a CPA, uh, what do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies or personal passions? Oh, wow. Um, I, I'm a water skier. I don't know if you knew that. I'm a, I did know I'm, that. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually a barefoot water skier. A few years ago, I was uh, ranked number two in the nation in the, uh, I'll call it the old man division. <laughs> and uh, right now, I don't know what I'm ranked, but it's probably top 10 in the old division, old man division. But uh I shouldn't say that anymore. <laughs> but uh, I, I love to play tennis. Um, I love to spend time with my wife and kids on, you know, my wife and on the beach and traveling, things like that. Uh, we haven't done a lot of that in the last uh, nine months, obviously, but right. uh, love to do that. And, you know, we've got two dogs and a proud father of seven and, and uh, three grandchildren on top of that. And, you know, it's, it's all about family and, 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 and relaxing. And it's hard to do when you're, when you're a state representative, you're a CPA and, and a father of seven, it's hard to find time to relax. But when I do, I, I treasure it and take my boys, we'll go out golfing, things like that. I like to be outside. This is Florida. That's why I'm here. Right. Right. So representative, last question here. Uh, many listening obviously want to see a bill passed that would attract more film and television projects to Florida, as we've talked about so we can compete with those other states. But, but sometimes people don't know what exactly they can do to help. Um, from your perspective, what is your advice to those people listening that want to engage in the process a little more, want to make sure their voice is heard? Well, I, I've, I always said this, John, if you, want to make, if you want to create change, you have to take bold action. Um, sitting around and watching this podcast is nice, but if the goal is to get film the film industry um, to be vibrant in, in the state of Florida, then we have to have bold action. We have to get up and do something. And I would say, let's get up and, and let's write a letter right now or, or, or an email to every state legislator and, uh, and go visit your local one. Uh, everybody's got a district office. Mine's right down the street. I can see it from my, my CPA office here. It makes a difference. People don't realize that when constituents take the time to write a letter or an email or, or come visit, it makes a big impact. Because, uh, you know, I, I was at a delegation meeting just yesterday and a woman came to speak in, under public comments. She gets three minutes to talk about an, an issue and I had never, never knew it was an issue. This issue was so glaring right in, right in front of our face it made an impact on everybody on that panel, which was senators and representatives. And we will go back and spread the word, I promise. She drove 45 minutes to come talk to us for three minutes, sit through a two hour meeting and she was next to last and then drive back all the way wherever she's going. That is gonna have an impact. That is gonna change lives. And, and so I encourage everybody to go out there and do the same, you know, call, write, visit and do it as early as possible. Oh, that's great advice and thank you for that. Representative Caruso, thanks for taking time to talk with us today. And of course, thank you for your ongoing support of the film, television and digital media industry here in Florida. Thanks for being on the podcast. You bet, John, thank you. And uh, we'll keep this up, John, until we see an orange tree and a palm tree at the end of the movies. You got a deal there. Thank okay. you, sir. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank All you, bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. bye. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of the Film Florida podcast. For more information about Film Florida, go to filmflorida.org or visit our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out the Film Florida merchandise at teespring.com slash stores slash Film Florida. And please remember to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast.